If you've been watching my channel for a while, you'll know that I'm sort of a Jabba the Hutt super fan. I've got just about every Jabba-related product that's ever been made. You can see a small selection of it here. But although I have some life-size statues like these, I don't have a life-size Jabba the Hutt. The closest I have is this casting that's from the same sculpt used to make the puppet from Return of the Jedi. Now, life-size Jabba statues do in fact exist, but they aren't usually available for purchase and are generally made for use at conventions and things like that, since there aren't very many people crazy enough to want one in their home. Some brave souls have managed to make their own life-size Jabbas from scratch, but since they're usually working with something like craft foam, it can be very difficult to get something that looks even close to the actual Jabba puppet. I sculpted these small statues you see here, but sculpting a full-size Jabba statue is well beyond my capabilities. Luckily, I happen to know a thing or two about 3D printing, so I thought that might be the solution. My 3D modeling skills are even worse than my clay sculpting skills, so I knew I wouldn't be able to do this myself. But of course, there are many sites like Thingiverse.com where you can download models that other people have made. Unfortunately, the options for Java models are really quite limited. There aren't any that I would consider suitable for printing at full size. The closest was this one from Jeffro. This is a Santa Java figure. And although he indicated that he would be giving Patreon backers like myself a hatless version of this sculpt, it's been a number of months and I basically gave up. And to be honest, I'm not sure that this model is detailed enough to make full size anyway. So in the end, I decided to commission my own unique Java model to use for this project. I worked with Josh Smith at Beast Toys, and I think he did an amazing job. His sculpt was very close right from the beginning, but I had him make some minor revisions that really make it look like Jabba. The object here isn't to duplicate the original Jabba puppet exactly, because that would be extremely time-consuming. I just wanted something that looked closer to the character than most sculpts that I've seen, and I think we definitely accomplished that. I do eventually plan to release this model freely for anyone to use, but that's going to have to wait until after this project is finished. Before I could print this at life-size, I needed to do a few things to this model. The first of which was to make the bottom flat. As you can see, it's sculpted on the bottom there. And that's not really necessary, and it won't print properly if it's like that. So first of all, we're going to go into Mesh Mixer here. We go to Select, and then to the Plain Cut command under Edit. And you can use that to just slice off the bottom of the model and make it flat. So in terms of the options, you want cut, discard half, and then remeshed fill for the fill type. At least that's what I used. My computer was struggling to deal with this large model, so it's a little pokey here. But you just bring it down to where you want the bottom cut off at and click accept when you're done. Of course, I could have asked Josh to take care of this for me, but I didn't think of it at the time, and it's easy for me to do, so I just took care of it myself. Plus, it's kind of nice to have the full, fully detailed model, in case I should need it at some point. So here we have the model now sliced off, and nice and flat on the bottom. There's some more things I need to do to this model before we can print it at life size, but I thought I should give it a test print first. So here it is, printed on my original CR-10. Uh, this is, of course, printed with some support material on it. I have already cleaned that up. But as you can see, it came out quite well, and all the detail is there. I'm quite happy with how this turned out. There's the flat bottom. I decided to try one more test print at a little bit bigger scale, this time about one-sixth of the life-size scale, on the CR-10 S5. This is, of course, the largest of the CR-10s with a 20 by 20 inch build volume. This ended up taking about eight days to print and used at least a couple of rolls of filament. I forget exactly how much. It ended up being about 14 inches tall by 22 inches wide. I printed this at 0.2 millimeter layer height. Of course, I did it diagonally, as you can see here. And it was basically perfect, except for one small layer shift there by his arms. This is the Sideshow Collectibles 1-6 scale Java, just for comparison, if you know this figure. It's actually uh, a little bit smaller than the one I printed. Looking at them side by side, I think maybe Josh's sculpt has the head and arms a little oversized compared to the body, but it's not a big deal. Looks fine on its own as far as I'm concerned. 
And if we take a closer look, we can see a lot of that detail that Josh has put into the sculpt, including the arm tattoo, which is maybe a little hard to see in this filament, and a lot of the wrinkles and things on the surface of the skin, some warts and all that good stuff. He even, at my request, put in the tail scar down here. So I think we've got a very nice basis to work from for printing our life-size Java. It's time to go bigger. There are a few different ways you could do this model for life-size printing. You could just split it all up into sections and just print each block, you know, with very little infill or something like that. Uh, but I felt like making it a hollow shell would actually be the most efficient and easiest way to do this. So luckily, Mesh Mixer can do that. It can make a model hollow. You just select Edit and then Hollow and select the various parameters that you want. After a little experimentation, these settings that I'm going to show you here seem to be the best. I increased solid accuracy and mesh density up to their maximums so that we wouldn't lose any of the detail in the model. Uh, you don't actually have to mess with the holes per hollow thing. That's for resin printing if you want to add a hole. Uh, the offset distance basically controls how much of a shell thickness you have. So I put 0.5 millimeters. And once we size this up to life size, it's going to make it right around a centimeter or so thick. So this model that I'm using is very detailed. It has a lot of triangles in it. So it took quite a long time for my computer to actually do this process. Uh, I'm cutting out several minutes of just sitting here. But uh, as you can see, once it's done, it gives you something that looks very much the same as the original model, but as you'll see in a little bit, it's actually hollow inside. For this next part, we're going to be using a program called NetFab Free, which is unfortunately not available for macOS anymore, but I have an old version of it. This allows you to do a number of things to models, like scale them, as we're going to do here. I figured out the proper scale by comparing the size of the eye of my casting from the original Java sculpture to the size of the eye here, and then figured out how much that should make the entire thing, which is about 3,000 millimeters long, or about 10 feet long, just under 10 feet. Seems about right. And then, after we've sized it up, we're going to need to split it into lots of different sections that are about the right size to print on one of my large printers. You do that with these sliders here that allow you to cut in the various axes. I'm not going to show the entire process here, but basically you just cut it a bunch of times into pieces that are appropriately sized for your printer, and then you can print them individually. For Java, we ended up with about 70 pieces that we're going to have to print individually and then assemble. One reason I'm using NetFab Free for this was that it allows you to save this cut version of the model as a file that you can then come back to and export individual pieces from later on. So I don't have to export every, well, all 70 pieces. In the beginning, I can come back and choose individual ones to export later on, and I can also check where pieces go, which might be important later. Uh, as you can see, if I delete this piece from his face, inside he is, in fact, hollow. Now you might wonder if it's going to be strong enough with nothing in the middle, but I'm hoping that once I print these out and glue them together, that it'll form sort of a dome shape that'll have some inherent strength just in the shape itself, so that it'll, uh, it'll stay together without too much trouble. But we'll see. One change I decided to make to the printers was the nozzle. This is a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, which is what I've been using up until now. And here we have a 0.8 millimeter nozzle. Well, actually this is a 1 millimeter nozzle, but I'm just using it as an example because I have all the 0.8 millimeter nozzles already installed. It's a lot bigger, as you can see, and that allows me to get things done a bit quicker. In fact, I discovered after doing a number of test pieces like this that I could get away with just a single perimeter, one line around, because of the larger nozzle diameter, and it's actually quite strong, and I think it should be just fine for this project. So that will save us some time and also some filament, I guess. 
could have gone even thicker in terms of layer height with this larger nozzle, but I decided to stick with 0.32 millimeters because uh, thicker layer heights seem to be a little bit too rough. Now this is one of the first pieces I've done and it came out really well. You can see it uh, attaches quite well to the build plate and get it off with a little force and no major problems even with some overhangs. As a test to see if this approach of mine was going to work, I printed four pieces of his face and tried gluing them together. They're just, you know, shells with nothing in them. But they seem to work pretty well, and you can see that they fit together more or less fine without any problems. And in fact, they did glue together quite well, just with some super glue. So I was encouraged by this and decided to continue on with this approach, printing some more of his head. I did end up having a few problems. One or two pieces failed altogether when they had major layer shifts in the middle that were kind of mysterious, but I re-sliced the models and didn't have that problem again. This part, I got a bunch of spaghetti because these support material here fell off the bed, but in the end it just made a small hole back in inside the mouth which I can fill up fairly easily so I ended up using this piece in the final version which you'll see in a little bit. It wasn't really a whole lot to the assembly it was just a matter of putting some super glue or in some cases epoxy glue on the surfaces that are to be joined and then holding them together while they cured. It was a little bit tricky in some places. You couldn't really use clamps in many cases because the clamp, because of the curved surface it kind of ended up moving the piece out of position when I tried to clamp it so I just had to hold it there. I do recommend using some sandpaper to rough up the parts that you're going to be joining together. I find that it really makes it a lot stronger. After getting to this point I decided a couple of things. The first was that this approach was probably going to work and I didn't think I would have any problems doing the entire Java as a shell. But the other thing was that I was going to have to get some kind of sponsor for this project because it was going to end up being rather expensive if I was paying for it all myself. The front half of the face, which you see here, used around five or so kilos of filament and the entire body, even as a shell, was going to be a fair amount. So I decided to reach out to Maker Geeks. They're a company that makes filament here in the U.S. And I've actually been using their filament for a number of months now. I've been pretty happy with it. So it seemed like it would be a good fit if they would be willing to sponsor me. And luckily, they kindly agreed to do just that. So Maker Geeks will be supplying the filament for the remainder of this Java project. They've also given me a coupon code for my viewers. If you enter Java at checkout, you can get 15% off your order, which is pretty cool. You can just click the affiliate link in the video description below to get that deal and also help the channel out a bit as well. So thanks again to Maker Geeks for agreeing to sponsor this project. So this is what I have at the moment. The head is completely printed and mostly assembled. I haven't done any finishing work whatsoever, so there's a lot of visible seams and things of that nature. I'm going to be doing some sanding and filling of those. You can see some cracks there between the front and back halves of the head. In particular, on the right-hand side here, there's a large crack, or gap, I guess I should say, and I'm not sure why that has happened. I haven't actually glued these together yet. For that reason, I have to figure out what the best approach is for filling that in, but I don't think it's going to be a major issue. It's just a matter of putting a little filler in there, and of course, uh, I haven't really address this yet, but the, the main goal here is to have this be completely finished and painted and look as realistic as possible. If we take a closer look, we can see where some of the joints come together. Some of them are almost invisible, but others are a bit more obvious. But, you know, we're going to sand some of this and fill it in with some body filler so it won't be visible at all in the final product. So this is going to be a months-long project probably extending sometime into the summer. I'm going to be doing the printing first and then doing the painting later when it warms up a bit. So I hope to see you back here for later installments in this series. Thanks for watching.